Sumi Ali, welcome to CNN News 18. Thank you so much for having me. It's a privilege. It's an honor. Thank you so much for having me. Sumi, you reached out to gangster Lawrence Bishnoi on Instagram and asked him to have a Zoom chat with you. Um, uh, I, I, I didn't reach out to him because I'm assuming that someone who's in a prison cell, uh, at least in the United States of America, does not have Instagram, and I'm assuming it's the same case in, in Gujarat, India. So I, what I did do is I did a put up a post, and I said that I heard that you're doing Zoom calls. And people took it as a joke and that I was being sarcastic, but I was not being sarcastic. I was being very realistic because this is a matter of people's life and death. And if you're doing Zoom calls from prison, which is unheard of and unfathomable to me, um, I would like to, actually, I have decided that in November, towards the end of November, I'm going to take a, a vacation. I haven't taken one in 17 years of running my NGO. I'm going to come to Mumbai. I'm going to Shiv Sagar, Elko Market. I'm going to Rajasthan. And I would like to have uh, a meeting with Devinder Bhai, who is the leader of the Bishnoi community. And uh, I would like to have a meeting with Lawrence Bishnoi within the presence of uh, press media. I want media present there. And I, I don't want to see, as a psychologist and as a, as a, a journalist, I, I have worked in a mental institution in order to graduate with my master's. You, you're required to work there for six months. I want to understand the psyche behind Lawrence Bishnoi, who's an LLB. I mean, a gangster? Why are you getting yourself known as a gangster? You should be uh, telling people you're an LLB. If he's an LLB, then uh, he's not too far away from my intellectual level. I would like to have an intellectual conversation with an LLB, not a gangster. And I want to ask him and get inside his psyche and understand what makes him want to kill people. So many people are saying, well, you're doing this for the publicity. You know what happened a few days ago in Mumbai? Uh, uh, even Salman Khan, we saw, was very disturbed. And, and then came this year, post. What well, do you of like? Of course, you would be disturbed. Wouldn't you be disturbed if someone had, a, had wanted to murder you? Anyone who, want, who want, would be disturbed who has a death threat on them? Of course, he would be disturbed. But then what made you take this step? Uh, I, I, a lot of people say, you know, Sumi Ali is doing this for publicity. Okay, so hear me out. Publicity is a negative word. I'm doing this for two reasons. One, I'm trying to promote No More Tears because all the, the victims that I'm rescuing are coming and being brought from my country, and I call it my country, that's my second country because my father and my grandparents are from Bombay before partition. There, so I'm part, I'm, I'm, my second country is India. My mother is from Iraq. Okay, so now I'm rescuing victims from India, which is also my country, okay? The second reason is that I am extremely anti-death penalty. I don't know if you are aware but when there was no such thing as DNA or the existence of DNA, do you know how many people, innocent people's lives were lost in, in the United States of America before the discovery of DNA? And, and how many people died when they were innocent? And after we found DNA, DNA was discovered, so many people were exonerated because they were innocent. So I'm anti the death penalty and I'm anti murder. Violence begets violence. That's all I have to say. I am for peace, be it India, Pakistan, Kashmir, Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, Russia, whatever. I don't care. Even if I have to sit and talk to Putin, who used to be with the KGB, and I have to get into his head 
and fix it, I will do it uh, at any second, any given time. I am not afraid to talk to anyone. I'm trained. I know how to speak to these kind of people. These, these, I know how to speak to Lawrence Bishnoi. And I will not speak to him on a Zoom call or anything. I'm going to speak to him in person from Rajasthan. I will go to Gujarat. Have, actually, my father is Gujarati. And so I will go to Gujarat and I will uh, have people with me for my safety. And I would like to have a serious conversation with this guy. He's 33 years old. He's not a child. He's not a 20 year old thug. You you know, you do this when you're 20 years old. So he needs to uh, come out of that shell and accept the fact that he's an intelligent lawyer. And what is, what is making him commit these heinous crimes? There has to be a reason. And I want to find out and dig deep into his psyche psychologically. You know, you, sure, sure. you know, you were in a relationship with Salman Khan for six years. Actually, Till- I was in a relationship with Salman from 1991 to 1999. Yes. So, you know, what do you remember about the days when he was shooting uh, for the film Hum Saath Saath Hai? I heard in, uh, in one of your interviews where you mentioned that how Salman Khan enjoyed hunting animals and you actually uh, don't believe in, in the idea of killing... Uh, so, so, so millions of people in the world enjoy hunting. I'm not a fan of hunting and I'm very, very terrified of guns itself in itself. Also because I was held at gunpoint in 2013 uh, because of my NGO, a human trafficker, he held a a gun at my head and he told me this is a warning, next time you'll be dead. So I'm terrified of of guns. So I've had eight personal physical attacks during my 17 years of running No More Tears. So uh, a lot of people are fans of hunting, the way people are fans of swimming, tennis, ping pong, whatever. Uh, But the point is that Salman is a fan of hunting. Now, what I would do every time he would take me for shooting for outdoor, I would would say, please God, don't let, let us find an animal. But I would say it out loud. So any animal that would be around that would hear a voice would run away. And, or I would cough on purpose So any animal that would be around would run away. So Salman said, for hum saat saat hai ki shooting bay, I'm not taking you because you never end up, never let us catch any animals. You you pretend to be coughing and you say your prayers out loud. So you're, we're going, I'm not taking you this for this outdoor shoot. I said, okay, fine. Um, and, and that's all I know. I know that there were other people in the, in the car also that were with him. And um, that's about it. That's all the information I have. You, of course, were uh, very close to Salman Khan. And you are someone who knows uh, Salman's nature. He's a very kind-hearted uh, human being. Uh, we know how much he held uh, the needy. Do you think Salman Khan will apologize to uh, Vishnu community? Do you think, will he do that? Will you offer an apology? Uh, I'm not. See, I cannot speak on Salman's behalf. Um, the, the thing is that I haven't spoken to Salman in years. I'm not in touch with his family. I have nothing to do. We've, we've moved on, right? So some couples, when they break up, uh, they, uh, you know, have a conversation. They stay in touch. We stayed in touch till around 2011, 2012, and then we moved on. And I've had four relationships after uh, breaking up with Salman. And I've, I've been in a long-term relationship for seven years, uh, about five years ago, which I ended uh, for personal reasons, which I refu- uh, do not wish to disclose. But the point is that there's no point in me reaching out or talking to Salman because let bygones be bygones, but in the same instance, I know what you're thinking. Uh, why are you then trying to protect him? I'm not, this is where the, the Instagram and the journalists and all of you are uh, misconstruing my post. 
what I'm doing is I'm protecting Salman the way I would protect the guy in the, on the street or my neighbor or a bystander because I am against murder. Now, let's, let's think about this logically. This guy, Bishnoi, is a LLB, right? He's a lawyer, correct? Now, if he has the logic, let's, uh, let's apply logic to him. Will killing or murdering someone bring back the, the God that they worship? And as, as well as I know Salman, I will tell you one thing. In 1998, Salman was around probably 32, 33, which is how old Lawrence is now. Salman did not know. I can give this to you in writing and guarantee you this, that Salman did not know that that deer, uh, that black bug deer was worshipped by the Bishnoi tribe. I know this for a hundred percent fact. So he is absolutely innocent of the crime and he should not be held accountable for this because he had no idea and a lot of people trump's sons have pictures posted with tigers and their legs on tigers and they're uh, boasting about hunting and 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 you know that's the president of the former president of the united states and god forbid he becomes the president again but but my point is salman did not know Listen, no one knows a, a person unless they're in a relationship with them better than anyone else. Because you share, couples share things with each other that they do not share with their siblings, they don't share with their parents. And I have, I have been with Salman from 1991 to 1999. I will, and I will tell you this, Salman is not aware and was not aware that that black buck deer was worshiped by the Bishnoi tribe. And they need to understand that. And a lot of people go hunting. Why, why are you going after Salman? Uh, do you think that, the, that in the entire Bishnoi tribe, that Salman is the only one that has uh, hunted that, that black buck? Do you think that in the entire that entire area, it's about 80 acres or however many acres long, that entire area, do you think Salman Khan is the only man who has actually gone hunting there? Are you kidding me? That's ludicrous. That's completely bizarre and ludicrous. And it makes no sense. And again, I reiterate, I want to have nothing to do with Salman. I do not care for him. I do, I'm not in love with him. I'm not interested in him. And I just am anti the death penalty and anti murder. Baba Siddiqui should not have been murdered. There was, there's another singer apparently in Canada, I think uh, uh, Musa or something like that, that was murdered uh, uh, by the Bishnoi people. I don't know who, someone, was it in Canada? I heard, I read in the news. Yeah. In yeah, some, some singer was the, like, what? They're going around murdering people and this guy's a lawyer? I mean, what is wrong with him? And he's, he's boasting about being a gangster? Boast about being a lawyer. If you want to boast, how idiotic can you be? I mean, come on. So, me, you, like you said, the last chat you had with Salman Khan uh, was in 2011. Well, 2012, yes. 2012. Do you remember that chat? Yes, I do remember it vividly. He had advised me about no more tears. And I, I told Salman, I said, listen, I'm getting a lot of Indian and Pakistani communities in America asking me to come and, and speak and be and judge beauty contests and all of that. And he said, he advised me, he said, so me, you run no more tears. Do not go but unless they give your charity a donation. And that's the last time I spoke with Salman and he gave me excellent advice and I still follow that advice that any Indian and Pakistani community, they call me to judge a beauty contest. I say, give me half the donation first and then I'll come and pay for my airfare 
and pay for my room and board and all that stuff. So that's the conversation I remember. 90s was a time when Underworld was active in Bollywood. Did you ever uh, meet someone or, or spoken to somebody from Underworld? I, I answered a call, actually. Uh, so uh, in Galaxy Apartments, Salman, uh, Salman Ji and Salim Uncle used to live upstairs. Salman and I used to live on the ground floor. We had our little apartment. So on our landline in the bedroom, I answered the phone. Salman was at shooting and someone said, uh, so I was like, this is a very disgusting way to address someone. Hello, how are you? What kind of language is this? And I've been, you know, I, I, I have been taught Urdu. So for us, Tamiz and Tehzeeb is a very big thing. So we don't use words like tu and uh, tera or we don't use these kind, we don't use bad language. So we have a lot of respect for people. And we, if they don't respect us back, we disassociate. We don't bark back at dogs. That's how we are brought up. So I answered the call and I said, uh, and he said, and he hung up on me. And I am 17 years old and I'm thinking, who is this person and how does he know my name and why does he want to tell me and take me where? So I, t I told Salman, Salman was very concerned and uh, apparently he took care of it. See, the problem is you have to go back in the psyche of a 17 year old little girl, a teenager uh, who is knee deep in the Bollywood film industry in the 90s when Underworld was ruling big time. And my best friend was Divya Bharti at the time. Because in Andolan, she was opposite Chichi. I was opposite Sanju. And Divya Bharti and I were together in an outdoor shoot in Bangalore. Uh, and we were do I think she was filming, we were filming, filming songs or scenes or whatever. And we stuck together like glue. And we became best friends. And uh, she was married to my producer of Andolan, Sajid Nadiagwala. So we all know that. And Sajid is Salman's very good friend. So Divya and I got along very well because we had no, no attitude and we had zero filter. So the, Divya explained to me a little bit about what the underworld is. I, she, she said, do you know what mafia is? I said, well, in America, I know what Italian mafia is but I don't know what it is in India. I have no idea. So she said, just assume that what the mafia is in America, assume that the underworld is the same way. So that's all I know. I, but I do you know the name of the gangster, the guy from the underworld who spoke to you on phone? Uh, did you ask Salman? He never gave, he never gave me a moment to, to even ask him his name. He, he said, tu kone. And I was like, who, how, who speaks in this man, in this language? How do you address people like this? So I, I don't know the names of those people. I don't want to know the names of those people. What is the most romantic thing Salman Khan did uh, for you back in the 90s? I think the most romantic thing that he did for me was he would climb up a pipe in Vindhya Chal. Vindhya Chal was a building in Mount Mary and apparently it still exists. Uh, my publicist, Prashant, who's an excellent publicist, by the way, he said that he actually made a video for me. It was the sweetest gesture. He made a video for me of Vindhya Chal. And opposite Vindhya Chal, Zenath and Mazhar Bhai used to live. And then the next, next to them, to their, I believe to their left, it was Jackie and Aisha. So I lived in Vindhya Chal for three years until I moved into Salman's house. And then I lived in Salman's house for three years. So he climbed the, uh, was it the pipe? He would climb the pipe because it was a two bedroom apartment and my dad was in the second, in the second bedroom. So he would climb up the pipe at two o'clock in the morning and tap on my window uh, and to come and see me. And I must have been 17 at the time. So I thought that was the sweetest thing. That's what I recall.
coming to the work that you do uh, for the south asian community in america you know i yes. saw a photo of raj kiran yes on your instagram the handsome actor we all loved in such films like curse and earth who was saw my post right yes who actually you worked you see that that post received the highest Uh, likes 1600 uh, uh people like the post and because so i met chintu ji uh, uh through a photo shoot it was banti kumar goro urmila and chintu ji and chintu ji i was very nervous because i must have been 18 around the 17 18 at the time and i was very scared and nervous because we grew him watching you know we grew up watching him and i remember the movie i loved him in the most in was cars cars was my favorite movie because i found uh, uh chintu ji and tina munim to be exceptionally good looking i thought tina munim i still think she i think she was she's beautiful absolutely beautiful and especially in that song with kaka ji shayad meri shaadi ka khayal mummy ne bulaya hai chai pe whatever sotan in that film i think i think it was sotan I told Chintu Chintu ji he saw I was a little nervous I was looking down and you know I, he was trying to break the ice so he said uh, uh so you're from Pakistan I said no actually I'm from Miami Florida I left Pakistan when I was 9 years old and he said uh he said so have you seen any of my movies do, do you recognize me I said I saw your jadoo ki movie and he said jadoo ki movie and he said i he said what does that mean and i said well when i was a little kid my mom explained to me that uh because some bad lady with a jeep she hurt a man and when that man died by jadu you appeared and you became that man because i was too young to understand the concept of reincarnation and he laughed out loud and that was a icebreaker and that's when we began talking about raj kiran and i said i said uh, uh sir he said don't call me sir call me chintu ji or call me chintu uncle either whatever you want to call me and he was very very nice very down to earth very humble very kind to me and he said that look you are from america if you ever go visit america look for raj kiran so i said i promise you i promise you chintu ji i will look for raj kiran because i want to find out because now i understand that it's not a jadoo ki movie it was a reincarnation and i understand uh, and i watched kar so many times i in fact watched it last week and i've been looking for raj kiran i've spent Fifteen thousand dollars of my own savings on looking for Raj Kiran on airplane tickets and private investigators. I have gone. I found uh, Gobind Matani. I found jo- Judy Wexler, Gobind Matani's wife. Gobind is Ra- Raj Matani's Raj Kiran's brother. I found Simi Matani. All of them blocked me from uh, LinkedIn. I sent them a letter. Uh, an uh, email i said please i just want to know as a social worker as a psychologist as as a therapist as someone who runs a ngo is mr raj kiran okay i made a promise to chintu ji and he has passed on and unki atma ko shanti nahi milegi jab tak main unka vaada pura nahi karti maine unse ye vaada kiya hai to no response So now I've come to know that he's in Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm going to find a PI on Monday. I plan on calling a PI uh um cuz I also have to go to Atlanta to uh get my India tourist visa for India. So I'm going to do kill two birds with one stone and go and find uh try and find Raj Kiran. Apparently he's in Atlanta. and i also get my tourist visa to come to india and the end of towards the end of november well we hope something positive gives us a positive new news about rajkiran uh, well we know you're running a non profit organization called no more tears uh, uh, and you're doing uh, some good work for for the women rights in america 
but uh, thank you so much for your time so me and all the best i thank you thank you for 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 highlighting the fact about rajkiran and and uh getting into the mind of Bish the lawrence bishnoi who should be uh calling himself a lawyer not a gangster and he uh i look forward to coming in november and uh fixing his mind because his wiring is all off and i know how to fix his wiring so i look forward to doing that and i look forward to visiting some old friends in uh uh from uh, mumbai from back in the 90s thank you thank you for your time and all the best thank you for having me have a wonderful day and i'm going to have a good night now okay take care yeah.